Tee. Hair flip. Yeah, I'm a better fit. I don't like it. Hair flip. Yeah. Oh my God. So you guys should be happy. Oh my goodness. Hair flip. But anyways, hair flip. And hair flipping on these toes. Hi. Check this shit out. So I've been getting a bunch of calls from my loved ones, people that support me. And they're like, take this down, deal with this privately. But I say, yo, they've ruined me publicly. They've tried to smear my testimony, make me out to look crazy, got people looking at me sideways, got people thinking that I'm gay and I'm not because I was molested by a pedophile. So this is how we do this. Since y'all want to try to shut me down publicly with sending out cease and desist letters, let's get in the room with the lawyers and let's take a polygraph test. I'm going to take the test. And when I take the test, you can you can do whatever it is that you need to do. When you take it and when you fail, you take this fade and you take that bit. Because I'm tired of being bullied and I'm not going to be bullied no more. Oh yeah, and I'm doing this polygraph test for all of my fans that support me, all my family and my friends that support me so I can move on with my career, move on with my life. Free me. Hey, what's up? It's Quentin Tarver. I'm the choir boy from the movie Romeo and Juliet, which starred Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes. I'm here with Shefik on invocation. And remember, everybody's free. Quentin Tarver, child singer in Romeo and Juliet, dead at 38. The former child star from McKinney appeared in Baz Luhrmann's 1996 take on Shakespeare and on American Idol. Quentin Tarver, a McKinney native who appeared as choir boy in Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet on the seasons two and seven of American Idol has died. He was 38. Tarver died in a car accident Thursday night on President George Bush Turnpike his uncle Kevin Tarver said he had been through so much said Kevin Tarver but his focus was on his music he was getting ready to take his comeback he had been in the studio working on a project that was supposed to be released this year Quentin Tarver was born in McKinney in 1982 where he started singing in the choir at age four he appeared in the video for Madonna's Like a Prayer and signed with Virgin Records at 12 while recording his debut album, Quindon, he was asked to audition for Romeo and Juliet. Tarver performed covers of Prince When Doves Cry and Rosales' Everybody's Free in 1996 film. His songs were also featured in the double platinum soundtrack to the movie. Released the same year as the movie, his first album included a hit single, It's You That's On My Mind. He took off on the tour with the singers Brandy and Monica, but shortly after having found fame at 14, he was back home in Texas. In a 2017 interview, Tarver said his career stalled because he spoke out about being raped and molested as a child in the music industry. He said he struggled with drugs and alcohol and attempted suicide in 2012. Young artists be aware of the wolves in sheep's clothing, says Tarver in an Instagram post in December.
most memorable sounds in the film is the voice of Quindon Tava. I was recording my first album when I was doing the audition and in the middle of the audition they stopped me in the middle of singing the song and they were like, you got it. I mean, obviously there was pressure from the record company to cast big stars, to sing Doves Cry, Everybody's Free, but in the end we settled on this young singer from Texas called Quinton Tava. Give me a whole lot of improvised <laughs> scat over it too, you know? In the script, Craig Pearce and I wrote as if sung by a young Stevie Wonder. So we went out looking for the young Stevie Wonder and we found him. The only thing was he, he really sounded much more like Aretha Franklin. His covers of When Doves Cry and Everybody's Free turned Quinton Tava into a superstar at age 14. That was 22 years ago. Has a lot changed for you in that time? Um, yeah. I've grown, of course. I'm now a man. I've got little other. <laughs> um, and I've matured, and my voice has matured. Um, I've overcome a lot. Just sing it to me. Brother and sister, together we'll make it through. Oh, yeah. Someday a spirit will take you and guide you there. It was also around this time that he was sexually abused within the music industry, a trauma that had huge implications on his life and career. I didn't tell anyone until I was 27 years old. What was supposed to be my dream, what was supposed to make me feel happy, actually destroyed me. Did you continue to sing during that time? No, I did not. I did not want to sing anymore because it took so much from me. But really, it wasn't just, it wasn't the singing that took from me. Actually, it was the bad people. So, um, and then finding myself again, I became able to sing again. I found my passion back, if you will. I'm free now. Everybody's free. I'm free now. <laughs> is Quindon Tava's first gig back and he joins a lineup of Australian artists including Ella Hooper, Jonathan Boulay, Cash Savage and Abby Dobson. Congratulations on uh, When Doves Cry too, because it was part of the movie, the Romeo and Juliet. You must have got a thrill. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It was yeah. really nice. I've got something for you. This is the uh, Night of Plaques. Right. We are, yes, we are giving, we give a plaque to uh, Trisha 
You would, and uh, this is your turn. Look at this. Thank you. Look at that. You can find a wall now. That's the way that's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm achieving platinum sales. Platinum sales in Australia for the single When Doves Cry. Uh, that's Thank you. Do you have many of these yet? No, no, this is my first one. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thanks so much. Oh, that's fabulous. I'm glad we could present it to you. Thank you. I'm sure it will be the first of many. You have, oh. a, you have a great cause. I, I, so, I've been, I'll hold on to this, uh, Quinn. We, we, we might get you to take us to the break. Y'all really gonna keep working with Chris Stokes, but R. Kelly's in jail. Quinn didn't struggled a lot with his sexual abuse that he alleges that Chris Stokes and Marcus Houston placed on him as a child star in the industry. Here's a post that he did not too soon before he passed away. Once again, God rest Quinn's soul. Quinn's quote: "As I lay in bed, I have some things that's on my mind." At first, I wasn't going to share, but I felt the need to. As the tears roll down my face, I th think of all that I am grateful for and how far I have come. For years, I've been hurt and consumed by my past. Finally, in my life, for the last eight months, I've been truly free. Free from hurt and pain. No longer depressed, no longer suicidal, no longer using alcohol and drugs to suppress. I can now feel and deal with emotions accordingly. It's taken me a while to get there, approximately 24 years, and I refuse to allow the very thing I've worked so hard to get over, come in, try and take over. You know, when I was signed at 12 years old to Virgin Records and Chris Stokes, all I wanted to do was sing, share my gift of song and a passion that organically flowered from my soul into the soul of others. I entered the music industry and I didn't know that jealousy, sexual endeavors, rejection, neglect, hurt and pain would be a part of it. That was never displayed through the countless awards I watched, the Saturday morning Soul Train performances or the number of interviews I seen. I just saw people with the love for singing doing the same thing I love to do. Well, that wasn't the case for and God's purpose, I had to endure so much. But I'm finally on the other side of the dark nights. I no longer resent the people who sabotaged me and sought after my demise. Hashtag Chris Stokes and hashtag Marcus Houston. You know what took place. So with Quentin stating this, obviously he's just reiterating what he's already stated. He stated that when he was a child, Marcus Houston would sexually molest him and Chris Stokes was present during these sexual molestations and that Chris Stokes would watch these molestations happen. Quinden never really truly healed from it. I think that he got really close and the closer he got to it, the freer he got. I feel like he actually became free, you know. Um, I do feel that he is free from all of this now. It's just sad that it had to happen in the way that it happened and with him being, you know, younger still. And I just feel like he just has so much more to live for and so much talent, you know, to show and express to us. And it's unfortunate that he didn't get that chance, but we will never give up in Quindon's quest to get his justice. He's not the only one that is owed justice. So we will continue to fight for Quindon because he fought for the ones that were no longer here to do it themselves. Quindon's cousin was you know in a shooting and he ended up passing away and Quindon was you know doing the stand your ground for him and others so shout out to Quindon for always standing up for what's right and we will do the same thing Quindon we will stand up for what's right and we believe you we believe you with IMAX who does that <laughs> who's checking for Marcus Houston <laughs> that nigga's lame what the fuck you talking about you know, it's crazy when you let the industry turn you against your own motherfucking family. You know what I'm saying? It's the most fucked up shit. And that's one thing I can say about this entertainment industry. I'm a real nigga. I, I could step in and out of this Hollywood shit, in and out of it. But I don't let this shit change me. I'm always going to be the same nigga regardless. And I'm a solid one. You know what I'm saying? For real talk. I'm a solid. Ten toes down. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. You know what I'm saying? 
motherfucker. Sometimes people get it twisted. You be hollering at the wrong motherfucker when you need to do it. Now, I'm that nigga. You know what I'm saying? But niggas need to figure that shit out. Oh. Oh. Oh, I guess everybody ready for me to drop my book now, huh? Okay. All right. I'm working. Oh, everybody want to get back together. Kumbaya. We, we, all let, we all love the 90s. Shit. The 90s was 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 good time for a lot of people. And it also fucked up a lot of people's life. Niggas want to get back together and think I ain't going to say nothing. Y'all niggas and woke up a beast. Nigga, go sit your ass down, nigga. Hey, I ain't got nothing to lose. Zero. Here we go again. Immature Chris Stokes and B2K. <laughs> trying to fucking ride B2K's fucking shine. Y'all niggas gonna sit y'all fucking ass down. Them niggas done went through a lot of shit. Let them niggas get their bag and go on about their life. Chris Stokes, Marcus Houston, bitch ass niggas. Oh my God, this nigga Marcus Houston look like somebody's daddy. That nigga Romeo, nigga, cut look like somebody's grandpa. I didn't even recognize that nigga. I, I didn't even know that was wrong. That used to be my boy. I couldn't even recognize him. And Kelton that look like somebody's uncle. I'm like... This shit crazy. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how this is going to all play out. And I'm still going through that. I'm living that every day of my life. In finding myself, I found my freedom. Because in finding myself, I found my being. In finding my being, I was connected with God. And I could not have found who I was without being connected. And being connected to Him brought me to my freedom. And I just want to say to, the, to everybody out there that you are already free. Everybody's free. Everybody's free to be themselves. Everybody's free to live. Everybody's free to love with no apologies. You don't have to be accepted. You don't have to be embraced. You don't have to be validated to be who you are. Everybody's free. Everybody's free. Together we'll make it through Oh yeah Someday a spirit will take you and guide you there yeah. I know you've been hurting But I've been waiting to be I'll be there just helping you out whenever